Hello everyone, welcome again. So today's lesson will be on the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. Um, so this is quite an important theory in terms of uh, helping us to analyze the shapes that molecules will form. So from, for the remainder of this video, I'm going to just say VSEPR because it's much easier to say and it will save some time. Okay? So the whole point of this is to we can use this theory to predict what shapes the molecules will form um, depending on what chemicals are inside them. Okay? So there are some typical shapes that we can see um, from this diagram. And for instance, there's the linear shape, so where all the components are lined up one after the other. That's something like carb carbon dioxide. This trigonal planar um, is, you can see uh, in things like uh, ammonia. So if you've ever used ammonia as a cleaning agent, um, ammonia looks like this. Um, if you have natural gas um, at home, that's mostly methane, which has this structure, where there's the C in the middle and four hydrogens around the outside. These are some common shapes of molecules that we experience in everyday life. So these ones are a little bit more sort of esoteric. We see less of these in everyday life, but they still exist. So the trigonal bipyramidal and the octahedral are both shapes that we see, but are not so common in everyday life. So what is VSEPR? Okay. So if we think on a very basic physics level, electron pairs in the valence energy in the valence um, energy level of an atom repel each other. Okay? So you've got a valence shell like this, there's electrons inside it, they're all negatively charged. What do two things that have the same charge do to each other? They repel each other, just like north and north magnets. They just push each other away. So that's really, really basic physics. That's all that happens. Now, because um, there's no real uh, thought, electrons don't think. They, they arrange themselves as far away from each other as possible. And again, that's just physics, because systems, energy systems, or systems in total, um, what they do is they try to reduce the amount of free energy in the system. So they'll go to the lowest energy state. So if you had a ball just teetering on the top of a hill or a valley, the ball will roll down into the bottom of the hill because that's the least energy state. Okay? Same with this. The least energy state is having all the electrons as far away from each other as physically possible. Okay? So you don't have two electrons sitting right next to each other um, because they'll just push each other apart. Okay? Now the reason they're organized that way is because you want to minimize the repulsion between each um, element between each electron. Okay? So that's why you don't have two electrons really close together because the repulsive force would be really big. Um, so you, they just keep pushing each other away until they reach the minimum level of repulsion. Okay? So that's all that's happening. Um, the electron pairs in the valence energy level which influence molecular shape include both bonding pairs. So even bonding pairs of electrons affect the shape. Non-bonding pairs, which sounds more um, confusing because the non-bonding pairs, the lone pairs, actually influence where the bonding pairs can go. So remember that each of the electron pairs wants to organize themselves so that the repulsion is the least. So obviously they'll um, affect the shape as well. And the shape of a molecule depends on the arrangement of the electron pairs surrounding the central atom. Okay? So if you look in the diagram, you can get different shapes just by having different placements of the lone pairs and bonding pairs. Okay? So that's just what happens. Okay? So what are the, let's talk about some of the shapes. So the molecular shape, the linear arrangement, um, is when the molecular shape with two atoms or two electron groups is like this, AX2. So you can see the beryllium is in the middle, and then there's two fluorine on either side. Okay? The beryllium shares its electrons with each fluorine and vice versa. But you can see that because of the way the electrons are distributed, um, it forms a straight line, okay? 180 degrees. Okay? And that's a very typical structure. If you don't like beryllium and fluorine, you can use um, carbon dioxide, which forms CO2, um, and other elements like uh, other or, uh, chemicals like that um, can be used here. Okay? So, Basically, anything with a linear shape forms the, is of the general form AX2, where A is one type of chemical atom and X is another type. 
two electron pairs achieve minimum, maximum separation by taking up positions on opposite sides. Okay? So um, basically, two pairs of electrons actually just move to the opposite sides of the atom. They just want to be as far away from each other as possible. And that gives you the linear shape. And then, therefore, it's linear. So the example, as I mentioned before, is BFE2, BEFE2. The central atom is beryllium. Has two electron pairs in its valence electron valence energy level after forming a covalent bond with each F atom. Okay. So what are some other shapes? The trigonal planar arrangement. Okay. So in this one, the molecular shape with three electron group AX3. Okay. So in this case, I've got a central atom A, and then three identical atoms um, X. Okay. So in this case, we're looking at boron trifluorine. Okay. So you can see boron in the middle, three fluorine on either side, and the 120 degree angle in between. So repulsion between three electron pairs is minimized by a triangular arrangement. So the three electrons kind of put themselves together in like a triangle type shape, and that's the minimum repul uh, minimum yes minimum repulsion um, effect. So the electron pairs are in the same plane as in, as you can see, they're all along the board here with me um, at an angle of 120 degrees. So one third of a circle, essentially, which is the minimum amount of repulsion. Um, boron has that extra lone pair, which actually would sit kind of on top, okay? which um, forces them all to sit in the same plane. So again, as I mentioned, the boron trifluorine is our example. It has three electron pairs in its valence energy level, so in the valence shell. And so we get a tri tri triangular planar shape, or trigonal planar shape. Okay? The tetrahedral arrangement is a slightly more complex. So it's a molecular shape with four electron groups. Okay? So you've got four electron pairs, in other words. Okay, so you got one, two, three, four electron pairs, and they're all separated by 109.5 degrees. So the geometric arrangement of four electron pairs, AX4, that minimizes repulsion is tetrahedral. So in this case, you've got methane, so C, and then four H's all surrounding it. Okay, so it's actually three-dimensional. So one hydrogen would be coming out towards you, and then there'd be three in the same plane behind it. Okay, so um, that forms the tetrahedral shape. So example again, as I mentioned, CH4. Four hydrogen atoms lie at, uh, at the corners of a tetrahedron. So that's what I mentioned. There's four hydrogens, one pointing out towards you, and then three kind of pointing back into the board. And a carbon atom is right in the middle. Okay. The trigonal pyramid. Okay, so this is the ammonia again. So this has NH. The example here is NH3, so N is in the middle, there's three hydrogens down the bottom, one pointing out to you, and then two kind of pointing back. And then on the top, there's an electron pair that pushes kind of them all around in the right shape. In this case, you've got a 107 degree angle instead of 109.5. So one pair of electrons, the difference between this one and the previous one, is that one pair of electrons is a lone pair, not a bonded covalent pair. So the arrangement of the atoms is trigonal pyramid, and instead of the nitrogen being in the center with stuff around it, it's actually at the top. Okay, So it's the apex of the pyramid, and then the other um, hydrogens go down into the corners, the, the vertices of the pyramid. Yep. So three hydrogen atoms form the base of the pyramid. The lone pair of electrons exerts a slightly stronger repulsive force on the bonding pairs, and that's why the angle is slightly smaller, because the repulsive force of this is quite strong um, compared to the uh, tetrahedron. So it pushes the, the bond slightly closer together, which is 107 as opposed to 109.5. As I mentioned, the angle is 107 degrees. Okay. The bent shape. Okay. The bent shape is the common one. Uh, we see it in hydrogen uh, 
sulfide and also water. Okay, so water and hydrogen sulfide have two lone pairs. As you can see, these two lone pairs here of electrons, and the arrangement of atoms is bent or V-shaped. So it's actually two-dimensional, and it's just a V. Okay, and the ang bond angle is one hundred and four point five. So its bond angle is even smaller than the tetrahedron. And the repulsion due to the two lone pairs is greater than the repulsion due to the two bonding pairs. Okay? So because they're kind of closer together, um, they tend to exert a stronger force than these ones because the electron could be out here or it could be in the bond. So um, this is just part of being um, this shape. So the steps to determine the molecular shape using VSEPR. So we write out first the Lewis dot diagram um, and determine the arrangement of atoms and the number of electron groups. Okay, So we just draw it any shape, just two dimensional, 90 degree type stuff, and then just put it down and see what's there and what, um, where all the lone pairs of electrons are and things like that. Assign an electron group arrangement by counting all electron groups around the central atom. Predict the ideal bond angles and the direction of any deviation caused by lone pairs or double bonds. So double bonds and lone pairs exert different, slightly different forces. And then draw and name the molecular shape by counting bond groups and non-bonding groups separately. Okay. So that concludes today's lesson on VSEPR. Um, it's quite a complex and difficult topic, and even at you know university or graduate level, um, we're still studying it um, because it is quite. Um, quite complex and quite uh, useful. So hopefully you've learned some of the basics of VSEPR. So we'll go through some questions and hopefully you can um, use that knowledge to consolidate and answer these questions. So what is the fundamental principle underlying the use of VSEPR to predict molecular shapes? Okay, The underlying fundamental physical principle is that the atoms in a molecule will arrange themselves in order to decrease the repulsion between negative charges. So the electrons will always distribute themselves in such a way that the repulsion is completely minimized. Okay. The center atom A in, the, in molecule AB3 has three shared electron pairs and one lone pair. What type of molecule, molecular shape um, would this molecule have? Well, it's very likely going to be pyramid, not tetrahedron, because we've got a lone pair. Remember, lone pairs exert slightly more force than a bonded pair. So it's not likely to be a tetrahedron. Okay? So it's not linear. It's not bent, because these two are two-dimensional shapes. Well, we've got an AB3 type molecule, so it won't be two-dimensional. It's not tetrahedral because of the lone pair. So it's going to be a pyramid. Okay? <laughs> Question three. The center atom A in a molecule AB2 has two shared electron pairs and two pairs of lone pair electrons. What type of molecular shape would this molecule have? Well, if we think about what this is saying, it's very similar to H2O. Okay? So it's very likely to be, um, could be something like H2O, but it could also be something like CO2. So there's a bit of confusion there, right? So let's have a look and see if we can go through each one and hopefully get some answers. So it's unlikely to be linear because um, it's got two lone pairs. So the distribution of electrons is unlikely to be um, linear, because you're more likely to get a bent structure. It's definitely not trigonal or octahedral, because they're both three-dimensional shapes. So it's bent. Now remember that it's not linear, because the lone pairs exert more force than the bonded pairs. So they tend to push down a little bit harder than the bonded pairs. So it's not likely to be a linear shape. Regarding a HCl molecule, state the following. The number of electron pairs in the valence energy level of the central atom, okay, there's four. Okay, so Cl has three lone pairs and a bonded pair, so there's four electron groups. The number of atoms bonded to the central atom, there's one. That's the hydrogen. The shape of the molecule, it's linear. There's no other shape it could be, because <laughs> it would just form a straight line. Two points form a line. Um, so that's the only shape that we can get. And then sketch the diagram. So it's just 
H on one side that contributes one electron, Cl on the other side that has seven electrons, and then just stick them together. Okay. So a molecule with formula AX3 has three electron groups with no lone pairs. Okay. What molecule uh, what molecular shape should it have in order to reduce any repulsive force between the electrons present? It will likely be a trigonal planar arrangement because it's got three sets of electron pairs. All of them are, um, are bonded, so you have to distribute them evenly. And the way to do that is 120 degrees um, each bond angle to make 360. And so that gives you the trigonal planar. And then draw the shape. Okay, so it'd be something like this. So you've got A in the middle, then three bond structures, bond groups, and then the X's on the outside with their uh, appropriate number of electrons. So that concludes today's lesson on uh, VSEPR or valence shell electron pair repulsion. Um, Again, as I mentioned, it's complex and it's very, um, it's very, very difficult. Um, there are many facets to it, but hopefully you understand kind of the base principles to it, and you can apply it to your uh, chemistry. And hopefully, you'll be able to see why certain molecules are certain shapes. So thank you, and I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson. Mm -hmm.